What's up? Welcome in House Correction at Facebook Live. It's uh, Friday, 5 p.m. You're probably headed home from work, ready for the weekend. Uh, it's Friday, right? Yeah, uh, it's Friday. Uh, it, it, we're headlong into the recruiting season here. Um, it's a contact period uh, for um, college football, so coaches are on the road recruiting in addition to getting ready for bowl games, uh, things like that. Um, so it's an active period. Obviously, Nebraska has got uh, 22 players in the class. That's an update today. We'll get into that a little bit. But basically, figure we just jump on here. This is a good way to uh, stir up some discussion and answer questions, and it's a good way to get get right to all you fine folks. So as people filter in here, we'll sort of um, get to it. Just throw questions in the comment section. We'll go from there. Uh, Steve might stop in. Um, that's really why all of you show up here in the first place is just to, to, to make fun of Sipple, which I can greatly appreciate. He's next door finishing off a basketball column. Obviously, uh, men's basketball hosts Creighton tomorrow, big game, volleyball, just beat Kentucky um, this afternoon to get into the Elite Eight, faces either Minnesota or Oregon tomorrow. So there's stuff going on all over. It's uh, definitely worth checking out HuskerExtra.com for great coverage from all of that stuff. Um, we're going to talk mostly football today, although if you have questions about other stuff, go ahead and, and shoot. But um, basically, the rundown of Nebraska's recruiting efforts for 2019 so far, uh, 22 verbal commitments has been some movement on that. Obviously, um, on Wednesday, uh, Nebraska got a verbal commitment from Wandell Robinson, talented running back slash sort of slot receiver, duck R, whatever you want to call it, um, who had been – people sort of thought he was coming to Nebraska. He had told coaches as much. Um, and then he flipped to Kentucky at the last minute before he announced on November 1st. Uh, sort of waffled on that um, over the course of time, put out a statement on Wednesday saying that he had sort of let uh, the pressure of wanting to stay home. People wanted him to stay home. Uh, outside influences, that sort of thing, get the best of his decision making. And he decided instead that his heart was uh, with Nebraska. So he flipped on Wednesday, um, big piece of the class there. They were up to, at that point, Nebraska had 23 verbal commitments. Today um, brought the news that Tony Fair, who's a junior college defensive tackle um, from Pima Community College in Arizona, is not going to wind up at Nebraska. It doesn't sound like he's opening up his uh, recruitment. Um, just it's a it's a great thing. He says he, he thought he'd make – uh, the grades, um, but he understood that Nebraska, what Nebraska was telling him, which is that they don't have the time to wait to see if he does. So, anyways, uh, Wandell Robinson, part of the class. Tony Fair, not part of the class. Those are the latest um, machinations sort of on, on Nebraska's 2019 recruiting class. Any questions, we can talk. Guys who are already in the boat, um, guys Nebraska still after, we can talk. Anything you want. So, uh, just uh, throw in the questions. Tom. I'm in, my friend. Does that mean that they have a verbal commitment from Tom? Uh, Tom Hillebrand. Yeah, Tom. Uh, you, you can be probably be part of the class if you want. Any thoughts on the possibility of the Huskers taking up to 30 recruits this offseason? Yeah, it's going to be a big one. Um, that's They're already at 22 now. Um, that's not including a reported graduate transfer of Darian Daniels from Oklahoma State. That's um, the older brother of Damian Daniels. Uh, who's a, currently, obviously, a defensive lineman for Nebraska. Uh, Darian reportedly coming along, too. That won't be made official by Nebraska people until at least a couple of weeks um, from now just because, uh, just because you know, he's still wrapping up classes. He's trying to graduate there. He's not actually eligible to transfer as a graduate transfer until he graduates. Um, and so... Once that's done, I think maybe that's sort of when you get official word from Nebraska uh, confirming that that's happening. He hasn't confirmed it himself yet, um, but we're led to believe that that is going to happen, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So, uh, yeah, Jeff is asking about the grad transfer from Oklahoma State. That's Darian Daniels. He's a, a senior. Um, he actually was playing his fifth year this year um, uh, as a senior, and he got hurt. And so he... He had play, or I'm sorry, he'd played his four years. Um, he 
was playing his final year of eligibility as a senior. He got hurt, but he only played in four games, so he took advantage basically of the, the redshirt rule that we see mostly young players taking advantage of. He kept that final season intact, and now it looks as though he's going to play that final season for Nebraska rather than Oklahoma State, but we'll find out more on that later in the month. Um, let's see. We'll kind of keep keep this going, although I do want to just get back to Tom's question about the 30 recruits this offseason. Um, 30 is a big number, um, but – they have the scholarships to fill. I mean, after the senior class departed and with some of the guys that left right before the season, you know, Tristan Jebbia, and then in season, Ty John Lindsay, Greg Bell, those guys, um, they're already up to 24, 25 open scholarships right now. We're still expecting um, some more attrition. Uh, Guy Thomas was the first uh, to leave the program that we know of after the season. There will be more. Um, it's just a matter sort of timing-wise of when that stuff comes out. Um but then there's another factor into that. Typic in any given year, this is going to get into the weeds a little bit, but I'll try to keep it relatively high level. In any given year, you can only have 25 initial counters. That's what they call it. So new, new people, new scholarship players in your program. But you can create space by counting players back. So Mike Riley's last two classes were both really small, 17 and 20 or something like that. Um, or I'm sorry, Mike Riley's last class and Scott Frost's first class. They took 26 guys or something like that last year, but they were able to count back eight of them um, because Mike Riley's last class technically only ended at 17. So if you have a player enroll early and you have space in the previous class, you can count players back up to a 25-person cap. Bottom line, last year's class, their official number ended at 20 initial counters. So that means of however many people Nebraska ends up uh, having enroll early in January coming up in 2019, five of those players can technically, for the NCAA's purposes, count as part of the 2018 class rather than the 19 class. Hence, that would make 25 back counted total for 2018 and 25 for 2019. That's um, We don't know if that's exactly how the numbers will break out, but that's how uh, Nebraska can take up to 30 recruits this offseason, even though um, you, you're only allowed 25 initial counters. Uh, Ty, if the Royals part ways with Bubba Starling, uh, would Nebraska entertain bringing him on board? He was a heck of a prospect when he was uh, coming out of high school, wasn't he? Uh, Ashley's watching. Hi, Ashley. Um, let's see. No, Derek says, yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, what do you think about Ty Robinson? I know he's making his decision soon, but will he come to Nebraska, you think? Richard, it's a good question. Nebraska really wants him. Um, Ty Robinson, for those of you don't know, who don't know, he's a big uh, defensive end prospect from Arizona, six foot six and 285 pounds. Um, he is out of Higley High School in the Phoenix area. Uh, Nebraska really wants him. They've had him on an official visit. He was here for the Michigan State game. Um, the coaches have been down there. Mike Dawson, Eric Schneider are there every week. Um, assistant coaches are allow allowed to visit prospects in this um, contact period once a week. And then the head coach can see each prospect once. So the way that they're playing it with Ty Robinson, they've sort of secured the last possible minute before um, the contact period ends. That's when Scott Frost will go down and visit Ty Robinson. That'll be December 15th. So uh, expect to see Frost in Arizona on December 15th to try to lock up Ty Robinson. It looked like USC was going to be the, the main competition there, but then Kenichi Udiz, uh, the defensive line coach there, got fired. Um, Alabama's still in the picture, uh, and so that, that'll be interesting. But right now, it looks like Nebraska's in a good position with Ty Robinson. He's announcing at his school on December 19th, which is um, signing day, so we'll know for sure then, but right now, uh, Nebraska looks like they're in good position for a guy who's been at the very top of their board, especially defensively, um, f since this coaching staff got here, really, uh, last year. Any big names in town this weekend, Jeff asks. Um, right that, that I know of, there's only three guys on official visits this weekend. Two of them are already committed, Matthew Anderson and Ramir Johnson, both important prospects in their own right, but guys who are already um, in the boat, so to speak. And then the other one's Amare Barno. Um, he's an outside linebacker from Butler Community College. 
Um, you may remember Butler Community College. That's where uh, Nebraska got Will Honus out of last year. Their head coach, Tim Schaffner, I just talked to him this afternoon, um, says Amari Barno is a dynamic kid. Um, he, he has 66 tackles and 13 tackles for loss for Butler. This year he's an edge rusher, uh, tried and true outside linebacker in a 3-4. Um, and he played, uh, Schaffner was telling me, that, you know, he played behind three FBS caliber linebackers last year, three guys that went uh, and wound up like Will Honus did at Nebraska. They had two other guys that went power five as well. Um, so they really like him. Check HuskerExtra.com. I have a write-up about him in our recruiting ticker today. You can read a little bit more about him. But he's a guy who, you know, if you sort of look at where he's visited and what he's got going on with signing day coming up, he can be a uh, January enrollee, a midseason transfer. Um, it, that could move really quickly after this weekend if, he, if, if the visit goes well. Uh, what about Noah Pola Gates? Any news? Yeah, Rodrigo, um, Noah Pola Gates is just across town from Ty Robinson. They're both in Gilbert, Arizona, in the Phoenix area. That's going to be a really uh, – it's a hotly contested battle. Um, Alabama's squarely in the picture. Uh, Arizona State is trying to convince him uh, to sort of stay there and be, you know, a core guy as Herm Edwards tries to build that program. Um, he can – and he – I think he's going to – I just read he's going to USC this weekend um, on his last official visit. So big-time competition for Noah Pola Gates. Interestingly – um, Nebraska just yesterday offered his cousin, his name is uh, Matthew Polamau, um, defensive tackle down there. And so whether those two things are related or what, um, probably actually just as much, if anything, related to the news that Tony Fair's reopening his recruitment today. So they're looking at defensive tackles still um, from the high school ranks with Matthew Polamau, the cousin of Noah Pola Gates. Um, so that's sort of the latest there. Uh, Scott Frost was in home with Pola Gates yesterday. Um, obviously, Travis Fisher will be back down there. All the defensive staff will be back down to see him throughout the rest of the contact period. But um, that's the, the latest with Pola Gates. He's planning not, to not announce his commitment, I think, until the Polynesian Bowl, which is like January 19th. So the early signing period has thrown a little bit of a wrinkle in some of these com in some of these commit dates because most of the all-star games which is where commits like to sometimes announce on national tv what they're doing um they're after the early signing period so like ty robinson originally was gonna sign he wanted to sign on december 19th but not make his commitment known until um january at the all-american bowl um and that just that doesn't really work because people are going to know if you've signed a national letter of intent. So um, it will be interesting to see if Noah Pola Gates signs in the early period or if he really does wait until January 19th to make his decision known and then commits in February. Um, so good question, Rodrigo, and we'll just have to see what happens. They definitely want Noah Pola Gates, and they're still very much in the picture for him. Uh, how many walk-ons got scholarships this year, and do you see an upward trend even more for next year. Brian, how many was it? Um, I think it was four. It was Brian Reimers, uh, Wyatt Mazur. Oh, boy, you're testing my knowledge because this was in August. Um, boy, I can't remember. The bottom line is I don't. it's not an upward trend. In fact, I think the, in 2017, when I first got here, um, the first time that Riley's staff and the last time that Riley's staff – handed out scholarships to walk-ons. There were six, I think, Gabron, Tyler Hoppus, a bunch of guys like that, Cole Conrad. Um, and so there I just listed more from 2017 to 2018, um, weirdly. Um, regardless, the, that uh, is always going to be determined somewhat on the um, deservingness of, of guys who are walk-ons. And Scott Frost has said you got to be a contributor, you got to be heavily involved uh, in helping Nebraska win games in order to earn a scholarship. And then it also will depend on how many scholarship players they wind up with uh, once we sort of get through to July. But there's some guys who definitely put themselves in the conversation. I mean, for one, Andrew Bunch. Um, we'll see sort of how that goes. But, you know, he played, and in, in he at some point this year uh, in 2018 was the number two guy, obviously started against Troy, played in three games. Um, another, and, and so, you know, we'll see if that, you know, if that's enough for them to make him a scholarship quarterback. Uh, another guy, Kate Warner, was 
pl- played the had the third most targets among the wide receivers uh, this year. And so you'd think that somewhere along the line, it's possible he is. And then you start to get into guys like Jeremiah Stovall, who was, uh, be, you know, from he wasn't even on the camp roster in August, and then he became one of their best special teams players, and he was named the special teams player of the year by the coaching staff after the season. So there's some definitely some guys who are going to be in the conversation. There are every year, um, and it'll just be all about. And then there's some guys who have been, you know, who were on the two deep at times during the year, like uh, Ethan Cox uh, and some other guys in the secondary. So. There are some guys who are going to push for that, and and uh, time will tell. But those decisions won't get made until much closer to the regular season. Uh, Tom, yeah, of course that those numbers about initial counters and all that are confusing. But I've got some good uh, lessons from some of the people over uh, on Stadium Drive, and have tried to figure out the best way to sort of explain them in uh, layman's terms. What are your feelings about Oklahoma and Texas rumored to be candidates for the Big Ten one day, Brian? Yeah, I mean, Notre Dame's going to be in that conversation too, right? And would it be great if every – yeah, build a power conference, it's great in theory, but there's a lot of uh, moving and shaking that has to be done in that. And and the Big 12, you know, they had problems there for a couple of years with the playoffs about getting teams in and not having a conference title game, and now they have a conference title game. Oklahoma's in the playoffs, so could it happen? Yes, uh, until you see a much more laid-out plan – um, I'll just sort of believe that when, when I see it. Amari Barno looking like a good possibility. Jim uh, or Jana, yes. Uh, yes, he is. We'll see um, what happens um, uh, after this weekend, how the visit goes and all that. They've been in on kind of a lot of um, junior college players to differing degrees of, of uh, seriousness, interest. Some of them have now have a lot of interest and are looking around. Some of them have sort of popped up and thought this could happen really fast and then faded a little bit. Tony Wallace, the corner, uh, falls in that category. We'll see what happens there from Independence uh, in Kansas. Um, so, yeah, a lot of, the junior college thing is always a little bit, you never quite know what's going to stick and what's not, but Amari Barno looks, does look like a good possibility. Brad, any word on additional grad transfers in a Lincoln? Not specifically, but I – believe that they will be very active in the grad transfer market let's put it that way does that mean they're going to take five no but you know Darian Daniels which has been reported from some outlets in Stillwater um, is one good possibility and then you have to imagine that whether it's offensive line or wide receiver um, that they'll be looking in other places as well and maybe even more um, defensive line or linebacker or, or whatever the the good the thing the reason why the grad transfer is of course uh you want to you know have players that are are high caliber players that can contribute contribute right away but when you're taking as many scholarship players as nebraska is going to take this offseason up to 30 is what we've been told you want to balance out the class load a little bit you know if you have 30 freshmen come in of course a good number of them are going to redshirt and so on and so forth but with got they have 11 guys i think that are going to be redshirt freshmen in the fall and all of a sudden you've got 40 guys who are freshman year of eligibility and your classes just get stacked a little bit. So if instead you have 25 freshmen and three junior college guys and two graduate transfers, now you've balanced your classes out at least a little bit instead of just having 30 freshmen. Uh, Will, is, Will, are you like across the newsroom? Uh, sounds like Paul Gates wants Bama but the tire strain him along. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely part of it. I mean, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. You know, I mean, I have to imagine that the opportunity to play at Alabama is one that's worth waiting for. And, of course, you know, any Power 5 offer is a good one, but uh, but we'll see. Will Lightborn be on the way out, and is Nebraska going to recruit a scholarship punter this year going forward? Good question. Only time will tell uh, if Caleb Lightborn's back with the program next year. Um, it's obvious why there will be speculation as to whether he will or won't be. Um, we don't have any official word that he won't be back or anything like that. I did see on uh, Twitter right after the season ended, he was out with uh, the crews that made the rounds in the hospitals and all that. I think that was around Thanksgiving, maybe the week after. So, you know, uh, at the very least, those guys are going to wrap up classes. But just the way that graduate transfers, you know, will be or, – or the transfer thing, the, all that stuff tends to um, become official – around the time school gets out. 
kids finish classes, they decide, okay, yes, I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, and that's sort of how it, that typically plays out. So Lightborn's one of the guys to watch. There's uh, several of them. You know, I mean, you can basically just take guys who have been in the program for a couple of years who don't don't play. There is Will. He's across the <laughs> – Will, who commented in there, he's one of our interns here in the newsroom. So he's, he's literally – I'm watching him comment – on this stream from across the newsroom. Um, anyways, that stuff will shake out, um, and, and Lightborn's one to watch, but there's a bunch, and it will be uh, interesting to see to what extent that attrition hits. Uh, Luke McCaffrey is the state quarterback. He's listed as an athlete on different websites, potentially not playing for three more years. Seems like he's maybe too good an athlete to keep off the field. Billy, good question. Um, they want to give him a good long chance to play quarterback. That's all I know at this point. Obviously, regardless of if you recruit a quarterback who could play safety or, or you know, wide receiver or whatever, it's just like recruiting an outside linebacker who could play defensive end or tight end or whatever. Like Chris Hickman, for example, could probably play more than one position in his college career. Will he? Who knows? Time will tell. It's sort of the same conversation with Luke McCaffrey. Um, they really like – they wouldn't have recruited him as a quarterback. They didn't think he could play quarterback. And Mario Verdusco and Scott Frost have a good track record of developing quarterbacks. So you bring him in, you redshirt him. Ob- he'll, uh, he's an obvious redshirt candidate. And now you've got two, two years of separation between he, he and Adrian Martinez. Uh, I, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but Adrian Martinez is pretty good. And so it, it, not to get put the cart way ahead of the horse, but you know Martinez may very well be a four-year starter in Lincoln. Um, a lot of guys who, if you're in Heisman conversation and all that, um, sometimes you don't last four years as a quarterback. Look at Dwayne Haskins. He, he, this is his first year starting as a redshirt sophomore. Now he's a Heisman Trophy finalist, and I would bet uh, he leaves to go to the NFL af- after his redshirt sophomore year, after his third year in college, because um, he's going to be a first-round draft pick. He's, he's really good. So you never know what's going to happen at quarterback. Two years separation um, is what will eventually be the case between Martinez and McCaffrey. And then you've got a 2020 guy, Logan Smothers, who the coaching staff is just they, – they absolutely love Logan Smothers um, down in Alabama. And so you could see a situation in which somewhere down the road McCaffrey and, and Smothers are battling for the job. But I don't think there's any reason to worry about Luke McCaffrey's ultimate position at this point. He's going to come here. He's going to learn from guys who have a really good track record of developing quarterbacks, and they're going to see – uh, if he can play it at this level, and they have the luxury of doing so uh, with Adrian Martinez also here. So there's no rush with Luke McCaffrey. If he can help him at another position earlier than that, maybe he will, but the long-term plan is always, is and has always been for him to play quarterback. Nick, sorry if you answered this, but do you anticipate us staying at 15th or potentially be higher? Well, Nick, yeah, that's it's pretty impressive. Nebraska right now is 15th in the team rankings on rivals. Um, picking up Wandale Robinson, and then a co- I think a couple guys like Jamie Nance was bumped up to a four-star the other day. Um, it's always a question of how much do you add at the deadline, right? Like if uh, they're ahead of Ohio State right now, if Ohio State gets three five-star guys on signing day, which is the sort of signing day that they've had in the past, then they're going to jump back up over the top. I don't know that they're going to rise higher than 15th. I mean, I guess you could see a situation in which, you know, if they got Ty Robinson and Noah Pola Gates and if they found a way to pull Lloyd Summerall and they got uh, the wide receiver, Demarion Houston, who decommitted from Texas the other day. You know, if, if you get five guys like that or something like that, sure, maybe they could finish higher than 15th. But anything in that 15 to 20 range, I think, that's sort of tracked as the likely landing spot, and I would think that that's ultimately roughly where they wind up. Uh, Javon, do you think Scott Frost focus is geared more toward the offense than defense? Uh, yeah, well, it is. But that's because Scott Frost is the play caller and coordinates the offense along with Troy Walters. They're always going to be a system that's – predicated on offense and 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 I mean Eric Shenander the defensive coordinator has said they want a system where the defense complements the offense not the other way around at the same time I think if you look at the recruiting activity in the like since this contact period has started what do you see you see them making sure they've got their offensive targets and obviously they put a lot of 
uh, effort into sort of getting back in the picture with Wandell Robinson. Um, but you see a lot of movement defensively. Um, they're, you know, junior college guys, guys that are coming in for visits. I mean, Jamin Graham wasn't really on at least many of the reporters' radar screens, I don't think. Scott Frost goes down there, gets him to visit. He comes up and commits. Boom, there's an outside linebacker. Um, they're going to take more defensive backs in this class. They're going to take at least one more pass rusher in the class. They want Ty Robinson as a defensive lineman in the class. So I think what you're seeing in this contact period is really a pretty heavy emphasis on defense, um, along with keeping the guys you know that are already committed uh, along for the ride. But, yeah, I think when it's all said and done, I don't actually know what the number shakes out to be right now. I don't know if I can count them right off the top of my head. But uh, one, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Out of 22, 10 out of 22 right now defensive players, but I bet if they land eight more that six of them are defense type guys. So I think you'll see when the class is all said and done, I think you will see uh, more defensive players than offensive players. That's, you know, with guys switch around and all that. Is Robinson an early enrollee? Well, Jeff, depends on which Robinson you're talking about. Wandale Robinson is, uh, and so he graduates here um, in the next week or so, and then he'll be on, can't, he'll sign his letter of intent with Nebraska on December 19th, and he'll be here a couple weeks later. So Wandale Robinson uh, will be here for spring ball. You'll get to see him in the spring game, which it was announced yesterday is April 13th at Memorial Stadium. Um, get your tickets as soon as they come out because it will sell out again. Um, Wandell Robinson will be here. Ty Robinson, I don't actually know. I don't think so. I think he's a summer guy, but I don't quote me on that because I'm not exactly uh, sure. Tom, Sipple's call of held as a best assistant was totally wrong. Verduzco has taken a fresh quarterback and done very well. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of assistants I think that did a good job. I think Greg Austin had a great claim on it, and I maybe would have given it to Travis Fisher because of the work, the the way that the secondary was just demonstrably, demonstrably much better than it was last year with approximately the same players by and large. Um Part of, and Sipple didn't get into this, so I guess I'm making my own argument for Held rather than explaining what his argument for him was. But since this is a recruiting chat, look at the recruiting work that Ryan Held has done. I mean, junior college guys, and they've signed, look at the, I mean, they brought in uh, Maurice Washington last year at running back, and now he's got Ramir Johnson, Ronald Tompkins, who's a fantastic player when he's been healthy. He just hasn't been very healthy very much uh, his last two years at Grayson High. Um, and Wandale Robinson and Diedrich Mills, who's a junior college running back, who was a freshman All-American at Georgia Tech before he got kicked out of school there. It's just sort of – it's remarkable the number of high-quality players. And we'll see. You know, We'll see what the guys that are committed for this year – uh, do when they get here but Ryan Held has helped to remake the running back room and whether you you know yeah Divine Azigbo deserves a ton of credit uh, for the work that he did for the way that he improved but I don't think you can just say it was all Ozigbo and coaching had nothing to do with it because some way somehow Ozigbo had always shown some flashes and done okay with opportunities in the past um, but he'd never you know, he, he, he talked about the way that he sort of overhauled the way he practices, the way he prepares, the way he eats, the way he trains, and all that. And that's not – that's a credit to him, but Ryan Held deserves some credit too. And not only that, but they got – Maurice Washington didn't get here until August 1st, and they got him ready to play, and he wound up with almost 700 total yards of offense in his first year as a guy who probably should have been playing 20 pounds heavier. So, anyways – it's an award that Sybil gave in a column. Um, everyone can have their opinion. It's no knock on Mario Verduzco. He did fantastic things with Adrian Martinez as well. Um, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't quibble with uh, Sybil's choice. And if I would have, he would have. He probably wouldn't care, anyways. Uh, Steven, any more O line commits in the class? Look like we've gained some walk ons recently. Um, yes, I would imagine so. It'll be interesting to see. There's some question about Desmond Bland, uh, the guy from Arizona Western, um, 
but he was tweeting about Nebraska this morning, so we'll see. I tried to get in touch with him. Um, we'll see if uh, he, he said we talked today, and so far we haven't. That's the way it goes sometimes with this sort of thing, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and then there's a guy they like in South Carolina, Jimmy Fritschke, who is a tight end in high school, but same sort of frame as, as the Matthew Andersons of the world, 6'7", 240, something like that. Projects mostly, um, but the bottom line is, yes, I do believe – that there will be at least one more offensive line uh, commit in this class. They've said all along they want to take five. They technically have four right now with Matthew Anderson, uh, who's from Louisiana, Michael Lynn from Colorado, Bryce Bennett uh, from Lakeville, Minnesota, and Desmond Bland from Arizona Western. So uh, after that, they're after Jeremy J- Jones, who's uh, currently verbally committed to Ole Miss. Uh, they're after Jimmy Fritschke. Uh, who is not committed. I think he visited Syracuse this week. Uh, Thereafter, there's another one in there somewhere that I'm missing. Anyways, they want to take at least five. There's always a possibility, too, that Ethan Piper, um, who is from Norfolk Catholic, uh, he's going to start it off as a defensive lineman here, but they think he could play either side, too. So they do have some flexibility in that regard. Uh, do the players have some special training during the offseason? Rodrigo. Yeah, there's not – really an offseason except for play from playing games in college football anymore um they're actually working out this week it's sort of a, a, a extra week of the winter conditioning program then next week is finals so they're not allowed to do anything formal uh during finals they'll be off for christmas break and then they'll be back uh to start the full winter conditioning program in early january they wanted to get this week in so that they didn't like last year without a bowl go 50 days without any activity um, but yeah, there definitely is off season training. Um, it'll be the full on Zach Duvall program from January 5th or 10th or somewhere in there, uh, up until the time they start spring ball, which we believe is going to be right about the beginning of March. So January, February, uh, and then spring ball, uh, same sort of thing after spring ball. They'll probably have a week or so of workouts before finals in the spring and then summer program all summer till camp starts. So basically there's not a lot of time off. Uh, so stoked about Wandell Robinson. Yeah, Craig, um, you know, you never quite know with high school kids, but there are a lot of people who have seen Wandell play who say he's really special. You can see obviously what they like about him. Uh, if you watch his highlights, he's just put up unfathomable numbers. Uh, for Western Hills High in, in Kentucky. Um, he's sweeping every award you can win in the state this year. Um, and, he, yeah, he's, he just was a really good uh, all-around uh, player, obviously, in high school. The thing that probably is the most intriguing about him is you just couldn't really draw up a guy who's a better fit on paper for this offense. So all of those things combined, there's going to be a huge amount of expectations on Wando Robinson. Um, the great thing is we all get to find out together um, – how that all comes together on the field and I know this is just it's like screaming into the void but if we could all just have a little bit of patience with the young guys let's see how they develop and when the coaching staff thinks they're ready to go they'll play okay now everyone else can ask Wandell questions again uh how much weight do you think Washington needs to gain to be an even more solid back well Richard anything will help I, I think that he was probably around 170 when he was playing this year, which at six foot one, you can see how t- he's a long kid. He's tall. Um, I mean, I think they'd like eventually to get 25 or 30 more pounds on him if he's at 170. I think some if he's six foot one and 205 at some point in his career and it's good weight, he's going to be a a real problem for defenses. Does he need to be that coming in you know August 31st against Georgia Southern next year? No, they'd like it. But if he's at 190 next year and 205 is the junior, that's he's got all the potential in the world. Ronnie, how many Gatorade All-Americans do we have as of now? Yeah, your question is indicative of one of the things that's happened with high school football, which is that there's all sorts of these things now. You know, there's the Gatorade. It used to just be the, there. you had the Gatorade player of the year in each state, and that was kind of it. Now you've got the – all-American Bowl and the Under Armour All-American game and the U.S. Army All-America, whatever it's called, and you've got this and that and another thing and another thing. It's hard to keep track of. They've got two 
Gatorade State Players of the Year, Nick Henrik from Nebraska, Wandale Robinson from Kentucky. The Seattle Times newspaper in Washington named Darian Chase, wide receiver commit, the State Player of the Year uh, yesterday. They've got two guys committed to playing in the Army, I'm sorry, excuse me, the All-American Bowl, which is in San Antonio, Wandale Robinson and Bryce Bennett. Ty Robinson, who they're after, is also playing in that game, as is Noah Pola Gates. Uh, Nick Henrik was invited to that game, but he's hurt, so he's not going to play in it. Yada, yada, yada. So they've had a bunch of guys who have had some pretty serious accolades uh, since the high school season ended. That's probably the simplest way to put it. Coaching staff likely to stay intact. Jeff? Seems so. Um, I guess the prediction I would make is that whoever the first – Whatever the first coaching change of the Frost era is, my bet is that it will be because someone got a job rather than because Frost let them go. Um, it's a really tight-knit group. Someone will get – an assistant coach will get a coordinator job or a coordinator will get a head coach or something like that will happen uh, before Frost lets anybody from the staff go um, because they're a tight-knit group. They've had success together. You could see as the season went along why they've had success together. So I don't think, I mean, anything's possible still, but at least for this offseason, it's tracking towards staying fully intact, um, which would obviously be a big change from, from recent years here. Weight versus speed, touchy subject. Washington isn't the speed back. Tom, not sure I agree with you there. He's really fast. Uh, also, watching Husker ball this year, I think Adrian Martinez needs to work on his overthrows, but he's a special kid. Richard, yeah. Uh, interestingly, Mario Verdusco said that after Mackenzie Milton's freshman year, they had to overhaul his mechanics because he had a high ball error. So there was something about his mechanics that caused him to miss high a lot. They fixed it. He obviously was fantastic this year until uh, that devastating leg injury that he suffered a few weeks back. Um, Martinez, it's just about details. He's got good footwork. He's got a, They really like his release. He's got pretty clean mechanics. So it's all about timing and decision-making. And I think that they believe that if he makes the right decision and he throws the ball on time, that it's going to be accurate more times than not. Uh, Tom, anytime. Tom says, thanks for doing this. Uh, happy to. Uh, that's the bottom of the pile right here. So if people have more questions... They can throw them on. Otherwise, uh, I think we'll wind it up because it's 6 p.m. on Friday, and I don't have that much of a life, but I could, you know, at least go home and make dinner or something. Um, but thank you all for uh, joining. It's a productive one. We're going to do this again next Friday. Maybe I can even convince Steve to be on it uh, next week. And then we're going to do one on Wednesday following. So a week from Friday is – the 14th and then Wednesday the 19th is National Signing Day. So we're going to try to have sort of a consistent uh, presence on Facebook Live because we like having uh, this interaction with you guys. And then we're also going to try to keep it rolling a little bit with Chris Bassnett, who's out there somewhere, and basketball. So he's going to be right here on Husker Extra Facebook Live tomorrow uh, once he gets set up over at Pinnacle Bank Arena before the Creighton game, so probably like 3.30 um, before a five o'clock tip off. So look for that. Ask him a bunch of questions about hoops. Um, it's a, an exciting time all around with the basketball team, even though they lost to Minnesota. Uh, big one tomorrow. Volleyball's in the Elite Eight tomorrow against the winner of Minnesota and Oregon. Football never sleeps. Uh, recruiting's in full bore. Uh, so we've got coverage of all that stuff and a lot more on HuskerExtra.com. Check it out. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. We'll see you back here. Uh, with Chris tomorrow and me and maybe Sipple next Friday. Thanks for watching.